grab some grapes and enjoy a grape interview. Jeanette is someone that when I watch her content, I don't have to filter what she is saying through my own brain like I have to do with other content of what is false? What is wrong here? What do I need to be conscious of, right? Like maybe when you guys watch my content even, it's very easy for you to let it sink in. Jeanette is one of those people for me along with Doug Graham and Dr. Morse, Ted Carr. If you wanna listen to someone who you don't have to filter what they're saying, you can know that it's truth. You can trust them. Listen to this inspiring conversation. We're here for you and we understand you. Welcome to a safe place to grow and have fun. Hello Peaches, today we have an exciting guest. We have Jeanette who's been raw vegan for 13 years. She healed her food addiction and so did I. So we are going to discuss in depth the ins and outs of raw veganism, food addiction recovery, vegan, what's healthiest, what's best, what should you do? What should we all do? Let's get into it. Hello, I'm with Misfit Vegan today and we're going to be talking about her journey with raw foods and especially how she healed her food addiction. So the first question that I have with Jeanette, she's been raw vegan for how many years? 13 years. All right. And she's been helping others. She's been even running and hosting festivals or for the Fruit Fest. What's it called again? Woodstock? Uh, the, Woods, the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Yes. Yes. Which is the one I've heard about the most of people saying really good things about it to really connect in person, not only online i know online is great because i feel like both introverts and extroverts can enjoy it because you're kind of like at home all the time but you're also socializing but of course when you're having those in-person connections with vegans it's super transformational because a lot of the time we can be lonely for a little while on the path i'm sure how many years was it before you first met someone that was vegan oh yeah well i knew some vegans i knew some junk food vegans um, but a raw vegan I had never met until I went to Woodstock and that was six years into my journey. So yeah, for six years, I never met one in real life. So when I met one, I was like touching that. I was like poking them like, oh my God, you're real. Like there's real people out there like doing this. And now I know hundreds of thousands of people truly like uh, from, you know, online that are doing it. And so I don't feel so alone and so weird. Yeah, and it changes it a lot too once you've met them in person, I'm sure. When did you first realize that you had a food addiction? Hmm. Well, I didn't realize it until after I healed it. Because when I had my food addiction, you know, most of my teenage years and my 20s, um, I just thought that there was something wrong with me. I didn't know it was a food addiction. I thought that I was lazy. I was undisciplined. I couldn't control myself. I was the problem. And then once I start, I went raw and I started uh, realizing that like that is happening to everyone on a different scale. You know, some people have an addic addictive personality. And so that really doesn't help the situation. But every single person on earth that's eating processed foods has a food addiction or else they wouldn't eat those things. We would never eat something that hurts us, okay? If you are doing that, you have a food addiction. And maybe it's not as serious as mine, you know, because I was eating um, upwards of 10,000 calories a day, you know, and I had really bad health problems. Um, I was pre-diabetic. I was overweight, 60 pounds more than I am now. I had cystic acne. I had constant headaches, IBS. I was always having bathroom issues, always having stomach pains, really, really really bad periods um, and back pain and just eczema, random things that, you know, chronic bronchitis, so many teeth issues, just everyday problems that like a lot of people do have. They don't realize that it's the food. And I didn't realize that I had a food addiction until I broke it. I just thought there was something wrong with me. But it turns out the food is designed to make us addicted so that we'll buy it um, so that we'll like have, you know, blinders on and just blindly eat things that we have absolutely no idea what's in them. We have no idea what they're going to do to us and, um, and the side effects that happen when we eat them. So yeah, if you're eating processed foods, if you're eating dead animal body parts, uh, dairy and um, you know fast food, you have a food addiction because otherwise 
you would never choose something that hurts you. What did you grow up eating? Like what were you raised on? Yeah, I had a really bad diet. And they say the first 25 years of your diet determines your health. And I went raw when I was 26. So it's a little scary. But um, thank God, the power of fruit and vegetables is phenomenal. And I have no health issues now. Thank God. And I'm almost 40. So I'm really grateful. But I grew up really bad, really bad. Um, I grew up in the foster care system. And I did not have great foster parents. So I never had home cooked meals. I never had kale until I was 27. I never had um, like I didn't have real food as a as a child. Um, I never had an avocado till I went raw. Okay, and um, so I grew up on Chinese food, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, Burger King. I remember we had Tombstone Pizza sometimes as like a celebration. It's like a microwaved pizza, soda. I never remember drinking water as a kid. I was always drinking juice or soda. Um, lots of M and M's. Lots of Snicker bars. It's really scary to think about the things that I ate. Lots of Twizzlers. Yeah. Tic Tacs and all sweets, that stuff. Right? A lot of the sweets. Sorry. Were you not conscious of the fact that there were more real foods at the time? No, I never thought about it. I never thought about food. I wasn't a, I wasn't, um, so like until the age of 13, I never thought about food. I just ate whatever I could get, whatever I had money for. And I didn't really have a food addiction. But when I turned 13, um, I started eating uncontrollably. I couldn't stop. And I was using it to deal with my you know, life and childhood traumas and all these emotions and things that I didn't know how to deal with. And I couldn't stop eating and especially chocolate and sweets and ice cream and donuts and anything chocolate, anything sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I just couldn't stop. And, and, and it continued from 13 to 26. And then when I was 26, I went raw. And it saved my life. And that's why I'm doing this food addiction course now because I want to save someone else's life. Like people don't realize that once you start eating an abundance of fruit, you're actually going to finally satisfy the craving because we have cravings for fruit, but we don't know it. And so we're eating chocolate and we're eating sweets and we're eating cupcakes and donuts and we're never truly satisfied until we give our bodies exactly what it needs, which is the fruit. So, I mean, you don't have to join the course. You can do it on your own, but it's a lot easier when you join me and the other women in the course, you get the support and the accountability and the guidance and um, the community that is so, so important, like you were talking about before. Yeah, I, I believe that, well, even people that like savory things, they usually like the sweet stuff. Like if even meat usually has sugar added into it or like a sweet mm. on it. So even savory people actually really right. like, like barbecue sauce ketchup yeah. that's all sweet yeah exactly right. so that's why everybody's point. Going, is the sugar and Good point when you fully satisfy that with fruit you're obviously getting the actual micronutrients and macronutrients that you need so you're not going to be like malnourished and when you're malnourished like that's why my food addiction was even worse at times with like the more underweight you are the better food tastes so it's like more of an escape for me um mm. i do believe that like a food addiction I know there's like that fine line between food addictions and eating disorders. For me, like my perspective on it is that everybody pretty much has a food addiction, like you were saying, if they're eating foods that aren't designed for the human body. And the funny thing is, like, w even when I first went raw, I was told, like, don't do that because it's an eating disorder, right? Like, what we do is seen as the eating disorder, but really, like, that's the most addicted that people are to food. And the only way that you can't be having an eating disorder or having a food addiction is when you're eating that way. So it's quite like the paradigm shift for most people. But I yes. believe that like the food addiction is at the root of all disease and illness and addiction pretty much. Cause like, as soon as you're eating those crappy foods, you have anxiety, you have depression. Well, first you have bad gut health, which fuels the anxiety, the depression. Then you maybe have an eating disorder or a drug addiction or alcohol to cope with that. And it just makes it worse when you're just like stuck in that cycle. Right. So I do so think true. that a food addiction or an eating disorder is actually just like an advanced really strong version of the food addiction and it's really really strongly fueled by the food addiction because for me like with anorexia it tasted better if I ate less or I didn't want to feel good because I felt so good when I ate foods or obviously like bulimia or binging you're just eating all the time so it's like a really really strong food addiction yeah I think you're absolutely right and I think that um you know food addiction is the it's the it's the same coin but a different side of it 
you know, because you are, when you have anorexia, um, you're punishing yourself by not eating. And when you have a food addiction, you're punishing yourself by eating. There's so many times where I did not want to keep, keep eating, but I, I had to, there's something, there was something inside of me that made me keep eating and I didn't want to. And I would often be crying while eating. Like I didn't want to do this to myself and it was horrible. And it was such, it was such a horrible life. And uh, I just, it was for like feeling good, but then you're also saying it almost felt like punishment. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Cause even with obviously anorexia, you'd be avoiding food even to numb or you eat so much that you're numbed out because cooked food obviously numbs people a lot. And I found like when I first ate raw, you're finally able to like process your emotions when you're not just eating processed food. So do you think that raw veganism can be harder at first? And do, did you have any problems or like suffer with more cravings or more emotional things when you first went raw? Mm, Oh yeah, definitely more emotional things to this day. It's still very hard. You know, it's like, it's it's hard and it's easy it's interesting because to me it's very easy to be raw because i just i can eat uh large quantities of food until i'm satisfied which is amazing because before that i was on all these diets and i was always starving myself until i been binged at the end of the night you know i was always like counting my calories counting my macros and um and now i don't have to worry about that i have so much more free space in my mind to be creative and do other things uh, but it's also hard. It really is hard to be raw because you feel everything. And if, if you don't know how to deal with your emotions, which none of us are taught, then it can be very overwhelming and it can be very scary. It's very scary to feel things that are uncomfortable, you know, to, to remember things, you know, traumas that have happened to you, to feel when you're sad, to feel when you're lonely, to feel when you're grieving. Um, to feel overwhelmed, you know, and, and cooked food is like the, the easiest way to not feel. And, you know, some people use cooked food, some people use alcohol, some people use sex, some people use cigarettes or weed, but I used food. And so I had to break that and that was not easy. Um, but I did it by myself and you don't have to do it alone because there's people like you and me that are now helping people do that. Um, but, um, yeah, it was easy and it was hard. The easy part was the food aspect. The hard part was part was the feeling. So yeah, for sure, I feel way more now and I have to deal with that. I have to cry. I have to, I have a therapist. I have to talk it out. I have to express myself and have boundaries with people and not just, you know, just like shove my emotions down and not feel things. So yeah. Yeah. Good question. It's interesting because you're saying that you almost feel things more to the extreme, like you'll feel happy more, but then also you'll feel yes. sadness more. However, I actually see it differently. Like I found that I feel like high all the time, almost like I feel really good all the time from feeling good from eating a healthy diet. And there isn't really extreme lows or extreme highs. Like I'm always just feeling good versus if I go to processed food, I'd feel super duper high and then you crash and get really low. So I see it more as like a neutral energy. Than yeah, I felt really, really good for a long time. But I mean, then, you know, things happen, life <laughs> happens. So my sister died, my mom died, my grandma died, I got fired from my job, I had to move, I had to break up with my boyfriend, I had this, I had that, you know, life, life. And so you have to feel life. And when you're eating raw, you, you're feeling it raw, you're feeling life, and things happen. And I mean, thank God I am raw, because I don't know if I could have gotten through the last 10 years without being healthy. And so, yeah, I personally, yeah, I mean, when life is great, yeah, I feel great. And I'm really, really happy and, and excited about life. But, you know, when life happens, um, there's nothing to numb me. So I, you know, it's, it's hard to say, you know, I think it's normal to feel emotions when you're having, um, when, when you're going through life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you notice well, what would be when, <laughs> sorry. when I uh, was young, I actually at about 12 years old, the person that I was dating at the time, like he killed himself. So grief's mm. been like, a thing in my life that Oof. I kind of also suppressed. <laughs> 12 and, years old? Yeah. So it was like my first love, right? Like you're like in love with this person. But at the same time that I got admitted to hospital, he got admitted to like a drug rehab thing. And I've never mm. done, I've never drank in my life. I've never done drugs because like, 
I've seen how it's harmed people, obviously. So that's like a big fear of mine, but then it almost like deepens your food addiction because it's literally like such a good feeling in your life and other people will find other things. But yes, I really like kind of like self like blame myself. because I'm like, Oh, like I, but really the reason that I wasn't there for him because it was, I wasn't taking care of myself, but for whatever reason I went into like, I need to save everybody. Right. And then you stop keep taking care of yourself because you're always taking care of other people. And as soon as you do that, then you end up harming yourself. And if you harm yourself, you can't help people. So it's always been mm-hmm. like that theme in my life. Like where can you be showing up for yourself? And even like today, like I went and I taught yoga class, but in the past, I wasn't able to like take a time to do yoga or to even teach just to like a smaller group of people. Cause I felt like, Oh, I could be reaching so many more people online. You just always deal with that guilt of like, how do I help more people while also helping myself? Right. And I'm sure you probably struggle with that too. Just having such like a large audience, but also a large heart. And we both have that drive to be helping people or to be even saving people because it sounds extreme. Like, Oh, we're saving lives, but like you really are. And I remember even, I already made the connection between my eating disorder that it was a food addiction as soon as I went from anorexia to binge eating and bulimia. But then I saw like your content on raw veganism, which I already went raw before I met you because I went raw for seven days at Ted Carr's retreat. No way. Yeah, that seven days was like, it was a business retreat and it was three years ago, maybe, yeah, almost four years ago. And it helped me a lot to like realize how much better I could feel without being reliant on caffeine after every meal. <laughs> so I also just stopped having like, I would always get these weird brain parts and stuff. And I just like, everything was just so much different. So after experiencing that, it was so hard to like eat cooked food and know that I could be feeling so much better. Right. So nice. then I slowly went to like being raw vegan, um, which was another question I wanted to ask you, but like, if you, maybe you can quickly answer if you, went raw vegan right away or if you went to cook vegan first like did you have a time where you were eating cooked vegan never never i think yeah i went straight from vegetarian to raw vegan and uh, what happened was i saw earthlings but i was also introduced at the same time to david wolf who was talking about this raw thing and like he's not raw anymore but he was doing lots of content online um in like 2011 on being raw And so I was introduced to that and I read a few books and I was like, oh, wow, you know what? I'm just going to try this. I'm going raw because I'm going to be vegan because I have to be vegan now because I realized that I was still supporting animal cruelty when I was eating ice cream and yogurt and fish. You know, I didn't know. I I didn't really understand the whole thing. You know, I never met a vegan. I never met a vegetarian even. So anyway, I went straight raw. Um, It's a blessing. It's truly a blessing and a curse because what happens is when you go raw from eating lots of processed foods, I was eating gluten-free, lots of gluten-free cereals and cookies and stuff like that. And I went raw. And what happened was I got really sick. I got really, really, really sick because all the McDonald's and all the detoxing started happening. And I should have, looking back, I should have eaten cooked food. I should have eaten sweet potatoes. I should have eaten like steamed broccoli, but I was just so headstrong. I was so stubborn that I was like, no, the truth is raw. Raw is law. I'm not eating cooked food. And I refused. And I was really sick for like a month. And then I got a series of colonics and that went away. Thank God. I stopped coughing. I stopped having these flu-like symptoms. Thank God. Um, But the blessing is that I've never had uh, cooked food, like meaning I've never had the Beyond Beef chicken nuggets I've never had the vegan donuts. I've never tried any of these things that are really delicious um, that are vegan and cruelty free. Um, And I'm grateful because these things are very, very dangerous, very addicting, and they're vegan. So I might be, uh, you know, I might be tempted to eat those things if I wasn't raw. So I'm really grateful that I never, ever tried any of this fancy. There was none of this stuff when I went raw. Anyway, so I was always really like, more so like orthorexia almost at one point where I was just so stressed about like perfect balanced meal of like carbs, fats, protein, you know, like that mindset of like needing to get absolutely every nutrient that it was such yeah. a to be like, wow, like you're pretty much covered as long as you eat enough calories of like whole fruits and leafy greens. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this orthorexia. Like they call us, you know, raw vegans. They say raw vegans have orthorexia. That's no. what they say. It's, um, it's the opposite. <laughs> 
Mm. Yeah, it, it really is. I don't count anything. It's been over 13 years since I counted a calorie or wrote down what I ate. And the crazy thing is that like society will have you thinking that raw veganism is extreme, but it is not extreme to take care of yourself. Just like society will have you thinking that if you say, I am beautiful, society will have you thinking that you're a narcissist. If you say, I love myself, I'm beautiful, I'm worthy and deserving of all the good and abundance in the universe, society will have you say, you thinking you know, that you're not supposed to say that, that that's conceited, that that's self-centered, that that's narcissistic, and that's not true. You are beautiful. You are worthy. You do deserve the best, and so does everyone else. And so I don't even, I don't subscribe to anything society says. I don't believe anything anymore that's on the news or in the movies or on the, you know, in the magazines and stuff. I don't, I just, I stay in my own bubble, honestly, with my own community. Um, I don't watch the news. I don't pay attention to what's going on because I know that it's all set up for us to feel unworthy, to be unhealthy, to be sick, fat, and nearly dead. And I just don't want any part of it. So yeah. sometimes celebrities die and stuff, and I don't even know. Okay, like stuff happens all the time. I don't even know about it until somebody tells me. And then they're like, what? You didn't know this? But like, I have to stay away from the mainstream because it's trying to manipulate me to feel like I can't do things. Like I'm not good enough. Like I need to wear makeup. Like I need to have surgeries. Like I need, you know, it's like constantly constant brainwashing that I just don't want, want to be a part of. And same with the raw vegan diet. Let me just say, if you look at the mainstream, they're going to tell you that you're going to get diabetes from eating the way that I'm eating and the way that you're eating. And the crazy thing is that I was pre-diabetic in 2010 and I was fainting a lot and I was very dizzy and I was having major blood sugar issues and I was overweight. Okay. And the truth is that it's been 13 years now. My blood tests are perfect. I'm not overweight. I haven't fainted since 2010. Um, I haven't had any, any blood sugar issues. And that's me eating mostly fruit, like 90% fruit. And I have a salad at night, but in that salad is mostly fruit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> in the salad is mostly fruit. So greens, but lots of tomatoes, bell peppers, zucchini, cucumber, those are all fruits. So please understand that society does not know what it's talking about, especially when it comes with nu to nutrition. And um, you cannot trust the experts anymore. And that's really scary. Really, really yeah. scary. Well, people are doing jobs. They're not doing what they're passionate about. So like if they're paid to be even my doctor, he doesn't actually even study nutrition like in the background because he's not passionate about it. He just goes to work. Mm. That's what he's supposed to do and listens mm. to whoever else is telling him is what's right for the human body. But when you think logically, you're like no other animal in nature is cooking its food. And obviously a cheeseburger and pizza is far from a natural state. And honestly, like cooking food or killing food, like that's coming from a survival place. People are like, ah, vegans are like in this survival state eating all this grass. It's like, no, there's an abundance of food and we're eating an abundance of food. What do you think about intermittent fasting? Because I know like a lot of people in the raw vegan space, especially do you subscribe to that or like some sort of fasting? If we could get into that a bit. I feel yeah. like we can't, we're in a time now where there is, and we would naturally in like our paradise place be in like a tropical environment with lots of fruit. So why would we like limit ourselves as to what time we're eating if we're not in a place where like that fasting mentality more so comes from if you can't find an animal to kill, right? So it's kind of funny that it's all so many raw vegans talk about it when it comes from that. What do you think about that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I think in an ideal world where none of us were addicted to processed foods, meat and dairy, I think that intermittent fasting is a great idea and it would be ideal. It would be great to give your body as much rest as possible, you know, maybe 15 or 16 hours off of oh, eating. Yeah. yeah, that would be ideal. But in the real world, in reality, when you're breaking your food addiction, when you're coming off of processed foods and very high calorically dense foods like dairy and meat and these oils and things like that, um, it's not a good idea to intermittent fast until you truly have a control over your eating habits and you've gone at least five years without eating processed foods. I wouldn't recommend intermittent fasting for at least five years. Same with the cleansing. I would not recommend a juice cleanse or any type of mono meal cleanse for at least five years until you know what you're doing, until you know for sure you will not go back to eating processed foods, dead animal body parts, or dairy. That's my re recommendation and my experience and my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. If you're restricted, if you're not eating enough calories, that's when you have the cravings for the other food. But like yeah. when you eat enough fruit, you're not going to want anything. Like if you're physically full, which is the best part about fruit that you can be yes. physically full. Plus you're mentally full because you actually get the nutrients you need. That's like the game changer right there. Otherwise, like you're always going to be a one thing. You're going to be eating too much lettuce that you're still hungry because you didn't get enough calories or you eat too many calories, but it's not the right calories. So you're still hungry anyways. Yeah. And let me just, that's a great point. And let me just say real quick, um, if you try, you can try all types of raw vegan diets, right? There are people that are eating much more fat on the raw vegan diet and try it. And they're eating, there's people that are eating lots of lettuce, like you said, lots of romaine or like, what is it? Oh, I interviewed a raw vegan. She's eating lots and lots of um, the iceberg lettuce. Like that's her favorite food. She eats very little fruit and lots of iceberg lettuce. And I'm like, well, you can do that, but you're going to be miserable. And you're pro most likely you're going to need caffeine. You're going to need chocolate. You're going to need to eat cooked food because you're not going to be satisfied. You're going to be hungry. And the cravings are going to be so out of control that um, you're just not, you're going to be miserable. And yeah. like the point of life is to not be miserable. It's to find a way to be healthy and happy and satisfied. And that's what the raw food diet does. And there's zero negative side effects of eating fruit. Zero, zero. There Do are you, some, oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you try to keep your greens or like your veggies lower? Like I know for me, I wouldn't want to have like carrots or something that's like harder to digest earlier on because I'd be too full. But I try not to avoid, like, if I throw some greens into a smoothie, I know it's not really going to, like, your body knows, so it's not going to fill you because you still be, like, mentally hungry if you didn't get enough sugar. But do you try to eat the veggies, like, only at the end of the day? Do you throw them in earlier? Yeah, well, if I want, I, will, I eat whatever I want, but I don't seem to get up and want to eat a salad, no. you know? <laughs> like, when I get up, I want to drink coconut water. I want to eat watermelon. I want something juicy, sweet, and delicious. And I usually do that for breakfast and lunch. And then for dinner, I want something savory. And I think it's because this is how I've been eating for so long. Um, if I want, sometimes I'll have cucumbers in the middle of the day. It's very rare, like with guacamole or something. But it's very, very, very rare uh, because I like to have sweets. And then at night, I don't want any more sweets. I have a savory meal. Um, like last night, I had raw vegan pad thai. Super delicious, spicy, savory. Uh, and, and like... There was lots of fruit in there too, but it was more the savory fruits, the zucchini I, and the... I saw that recipe and it's really funny because recently I didn't know it was a thing, but I've been making like maple mustard sauce and just like every night for the past like couple of weeks because my garden or my neighbor's garden has a ton of cucumbers. So I have like cucumber needles and I'll add lots of maple syrup and mustard and it's just been like this weird addiction because like... That so sugar, good. That sugar and oil basically, but obviously it's a lot different to have an avocado and raspberries and celery blended together than like avocado oil and sugar and um salt so it's it's not as like addictive but it is really wait good. what oil where's the oil no i don't eat oil or sugar or salt but like the avocado oh. is like fat right so like fat sugar and oil is just palatable like it's really good right 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 yeah i mean and i <laughs> have avocado if i want it and i have whatever i want if i want to eat nuts i'll have nuts but like i seem to just want fruit and i know the reason why is because i've been eating it you know yeah. whatever we're eating we want more of I also find that like I know that I feel more dehydrated and less energy with just like nuts. It takes a long time for it to digest. But it also I just know that like you'd have to eat such a small amount and I'd way rather eat like lots of fruit because it just tastes better and you feel better, right? <laughs> oh yeah. And that's what I bar our bodies want. Our bodies want the water. Our bodies want the water and there's so little water in nuts and seeds. And nuts, let's just be honest, they're they're for the ground. They're to put in the ground to grow trees you know and it's like the seeds of fruit you wouldn't eat the pit of a peach right like so seeds aren't really our species specific food sure we can eat them sure there's some benefits to them but they're not really what we were designed for you know i think squirrels were designed to eat nuts but humans were designed to eat the fruit on the tree not mm -hmm. the tree how many meals a day do you think someone should have like i found for me in the beginning i might have had like six to even like 10 times i was eating because you have to get used to like how much volume you need. So I would eat as much as I wanted at that meal, but I would still be hungry because you're just haven't like stressed your stomach. People say, what do you, how do you feel about that? And do you think it's better for me now? I feel better if I can eat enough in three meals because then you're not focused on food the rest of the time you're energized and you can just eat lots at that meal. But some people don't feel as good on that. How do you feel and how many meals a day do you eat? I generally eat two to three meals a day. Um, sometimes snack 
on grapes or something like this. But I usually eat um, a big meal. Well, yeah, I usually eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But my breakfast is like noon. My lunch is like 12, uh, 4 o'clock. And then my dinner is around 7. Um, sometimes I don't need... I'm not hungry in the middle of the day, depending on what I've eaten for breakfast. If I have a very big smoothie with like, you know, 10 bananas and, um, you know, dates and some kale in there, some hemp seeds, I might not be hungry until dinner time, honestly. But usually it's, yeah, three meals a day. And I think it depends on the person. I think it depends on what you like and how you feel. Don't like force yourself to eat, but truly do eat when you're hungry. And if you want to eat smaller meals, you can do that. You can eat the larger meals too. Uh, my stomach was already stretched out so much from being, you know, a chronic binger. So I had lots of room in my stomach. I stretched out my stomach, you know, so I did all the work before I yeah. went raw. Yeah, for sure. And the longer or the more that you've eaten at that meal, you can go longer between two. And even if someone is trying to like, obviously, it's better to eat more so like during the sun, when the sun's up. But if someone gets hungry after that time because they didn't eat enough, I think it's good to like eat enough until you can get enough food earlier on in the day, right? And have more of like a seven hour or so eating window like you have. But there's no reason to do like two hours only that I eat or like one meal a day if that's not how you want to live, right? But listen to your body, I think. I don't think it's possible to do one meal a day raw. I did know one person in real life that was doing it, but he wasn't like, he was eating cooked food sometimes for sure. And he also like super super active super fit and the one meal would last like hours it would be like yeah. two or three hours that he was eating um and uh i mean personally i didn't think that was the healthiest way to live uh <laughs> but you know experiment do what you want but don't complain about it not working out because yeah. i can't imagine somebody being able to eat enough calories in one meal for a raw food diet it's mostly water so yeah Plus, you'd miss out on the best ones. Like, you'd have to stick to bananas when you want watermelon, right? <laughs> right, right, um, right. I hear this a lot for people in the food addiction community if they did get to the raw diet, which is definitely the path. But they'll push a juice fast first. And it really bothers me because they say in order to heal your food addiction, you need to not eat food. But what they don't understand is fruits and vegetables aren't addictive. So you need to eat the non-addictive mm -hmm. foods. Like you can eat as much fruits and veggies as you want in the raw natural state, which I think juice would actually be more stimulating and more of an addiction in my opinion. And if someone has a drug addiction, they don't not breathe air. Like they still breathe air. And if someone has an alcohol addiction, they still drink water. So can't we still eat fruits and veggies? What's your opinion? Do people say that, that in order to heal your food yeah. addiction, you need to stop eating things, food? But I kind of, feel like it's fine because he pushes it anyways like nathan yes i don't know if you've seen him no i don't know who that is but That's the main um, thing is like heal food addiction do an extended juice fast and i've had other people come to me now after that and it didn't go well so that's absurd. Yeah, no, I do have lots of clients that have done um i'm not going to say his name but someone else's 40 day juice fast and um the problem is that well let's just look at the basics the common sense of it all which is juice has no fiber so like, how can you possibly feel full and reprogram and retrain your micro microbiome on juice when it has no fiber and fiber is what the microbiome eat? You are truly doing yourself a disservice. If you go to do a juice cleanse thinking that that's going to be the catalyst to your healthy new lifestyle, well, you might be the exception to the rule, but you'll be the exception, not the rule. 90, I believe that 99% of people will go on a juice cleanse and go back to eating processed foods because they'll be so hungry. They will not have learned how to eat a healthy vegan diet. And their microbiome are so confused right now because they haven't been getting their food, their fuel source. So, and plus, you know, fruit, sugar, like um, fruit juice, it's not ideal. It's really not ideal. Like the best juice, in my opinion, is green juice with a little fruit in it. You really don't want to drink an abundance of fruit juice because, well, it's not unhealthy, but it has no fiber. So the, it will give you, you know, a very high blood sugar and you're not going to feel full. And so what's the point? You know, if you're trying to break your food addiction, the main, the main purpose and the main way to do it is to feel full on the fruit and vegetables, but the juice doesn't do that for you. It's such a joke and it ruins people's self-esteem. It makes people feel like they aren't good enough, like they don't have enough discipline. When meanwhile, who could do that? The person running the program can't even do that. The person run running the program, let me just say, 
he says he's 90% raw. He's not even raw. So how can somebody that is not even 100% raw teach other people how to go raw? You know, that he's saying to go raw, you need to do a juice cleanse, but he's not raw. So I just want everyone to be, have discernment and use common sense mm -hmm. and learn how to eat a healthy raw vegan diet. That's how you become a healthy raw vegan. You learn how to do it. You don't go, you don't learn how to do a juice cleanse to eat, to learn how to be raw. It's supposed to be the fastest way to cleanse. But from my experience, anytime that I'm drinking juice, especially just juice, like I get constipated because you don't have the fiber, you don't have the water, which is going to help you eliminate waste. And that's yes. the whole point of a cleanse is to eliminate waste. <laughs> yeah, I would much rather people get colonics than go on juice cleanses because they are so much better at removing the old decaying fecal matter that we all have built up over the years. All right. Everybody is carrying between five and 25 pounds of undigested old decaying fecal matter, especially from animal, you know, rotten dead animal body parts inside of us. I mean, let's be honest. So, yeah, I would recommend colonics, gravity method, closed system colonics. And I'll never go on another juice cleanse. I did. I did a 35 day juice cleanse in 20, 2018. Big mistake. I'll never do that again. <laughs> I would love to hear your opinion on the eating disorder recovery community. That's more so like positivity about eating really unhealthy foods, because I've seen posts even that's like, what about when you're on your deathbed and you're looking back and you're like, I didn't get to enjoy the cake or the cake, the, like the gender reveal cake or birthday parties and all this stuff. And I'm like, but I didn't experience my life. Like, it's not just about enjoying food. It's about enjoying your life. And what if I don't even make it to my 90th birthday because I was eating crap my whole life. Right. So what do you think? Great question. Oh, great question. So you have some good ones. So I would personally say that you have tried to be healthy eating in moderation. You have tried that. We've all tried that. And people with food addictions cannot do it. Most people cannot simply eat one bite of the cake. They have to eat the whole slice, which, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it if you don't like, uh, if you eat that once in a while, once in a blue moon. But what happens is you get you get addicted and the next day you want more cake and the next day you want more and you're not enjoying your life if you're eating things that are causing dis-ease in your body. You know, the, yeah, the eating disorder recovery community is lost just like most of the, most of the um, experts in our society are lost nutritionally. Whereas, you know, we should not learn how to heal ourselves by eating things that hurt us, okay? We need to find a way and I recommend, you know, studying books like Return to the Brain of Eden, which will help you understand what we're supposed to eat, okay? Because we were never supposed to eat the gender reveal cake. We were never supposed to eat the cupcakes and the sodas and the candies. This is, this is an eating disorder, truly. Eating things that harm you, that cause disease, diabetes, strokes, cancer to form in the body, this is an eating disorder. And I don't care if everybody's doing it. You know, there's an expression, right is right, even if no one's doing it, and wrong is wrong, even if everyone's doing it. And personally, I'm living my life. I'm living my life and no, it's not always easy. I have to bring my own food to functions, to weddings and things like this and birthday parties. But guess what? I'm having fun. People always want my fruit. They want to try the fruit that I'm bringing. I'm feeling good. I'm healthy. I'm always taking care of myself. I'm never feeling guilty. I'm never feeling crappy the next day. I don't have constipation. I don't have bloating. I don't have diseases that are forming in other people's bodies. I don't have to deal with these, you know, diabetes and all these things. Part two of the interview will be posted tomorrow. Subscribe and I'll see you there. If you're struggling with food addiction or know that raw veganism is the path for you, eating lots of fruit, satisfying yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, check out Jeanette's and my links below for support on healing your food addiction, going raw, living your healthiest, happiest, most fulfilling life filled with freedom.